How you guys doing out there? Dragon Man here. And this is my uh, motor testing stand we made uh, years and years ago. Maybe 40 years ago. All the complete motors I used to do, we used to uh, test in here and show the customers that everything works good. This is great, you know, for other shops to show the customers that you can adjust everything, nothing leaks, everything will be adjusted, the push rods, the timing, and uh, this way the guy gets a real good motor job. So anyway, let me talk about the motor here. This is a, a 71 shovel head. Now this motor stand will adapt to 1936, uh, let's see, the 47 knuckle heads, 1948, the 65 pan heads, and uh, 1966 uh, shovel heads, and it even adapts to the uh, evolution up to 1999. So I could test all those kind of motors right here. Now the oil that we use in these, because it has uh, cast uh, cylinders, it actually runs a little hotter than an Evolution because uh, the uh, cast iron uh, cylinders keep the heat in and we recommend uh, 70 weight oil, see 70 weight oil, especially in the summer because the oil when the motor warms up and heats up, uh, the oil definitely is going to thin out, so you need thick oil. The Evolution they recommend 2050 weight. I don't like that 2050 weight oil. You should use always straight weight in an air cooled motor. Straight weight 50 is perfect for the Evolution. This motor I rebuilt, it only took eight hours. I could rebuild a complete motor in eight hours. But uh, the deal that I like to do for people these days, it's called the Rebuild Your Own Motor. They send in the lower end complete and a plastic milk crate. It'll weigh about 55, 60 pounds. It'll go UPS. The heads and the barrels could go in four separate cardboard boxes into one bigger box and that could go UPS. That weighs about 50 pounds. This way we don't have to assemble the whole motor, you're saving labor and especially in the trucking company uh, prices are really high these days. So I just sent the motor complete to upstate New York and it was like $700. So uh, if you sent it UPS, that same deal would have cost only maybe $125. So that's why we do a rebuild your own motor. It's a thousand dollars. Okay, well this motor right here, this has hydraulic lifters. And uh, if you read your uh, manual, it says to get the lifter at the bottom point of the cam, the lowest point of the cam, and then take two 7 16 inch wrenches and adjust it. See the adjustment right here, two 7 16 open end wrenches, and adjust it so the push rod just spins with a slight drag and no up and down. Well, the book is 100% wrong because they don't say that the lifter has to be empty first, no oil in it. If there's oil in a lifter, it's not going to go all the way down. And when you go four and a half, three and a half turns, uh, it's going to bend the, the valves. The valves are going to hit each other, right? So what I do, you take the lifter, you pull the lifter right out of the uh, lifter body. See, this is the lifter, the hydraulic lifter. See that? And... Uh, See, I'm compressing the spring. See that? See, it's not going all the way down. That's probably because there's still oil in there. So I push the check ball. See, now it went all the way down. See, it's compressed. I put it in the oil and let it up slowly. And see, now I can't press down anymore because the lifter is full and there's no air bubbles in there. So now you should take the lifter and put it in the uh, lifter assembly, the roller assembly. Now you could put your push right in there and adjust it so it just spins with no up and down. This way there's no guesswork, you know. The lifter is already bled, there's no air bubbles, it can't go down any further, and all you have to do is adjust it so it just spins. A lot of guys don't like solid lifters. I love solid lifters. It gives you the total lift of the cam. You put the solid lifter in there. The reason they don't like solid lifters is because uh, a lot of guys put the lifters in there, the, the motor's ice cold, they adjust it, right? Then they start up the motor, they run it around a lot, and then the motor reaches its operating temperature and uh, everything expands. So the thing to do with solid lifters is, is adjust them when it's cold and then again when it's warm and you won't get any ticking. Uh, the, the solid lifter has to uh, be adjusted so there's no up and down play and a slight drag. Uh, I have real good luck with solid lifters. Okay, and the uh, pan heads, knuckle heads, uh, early uh, shovel heads, they used a 3 8 reach, 9 16 14 millimeter spot plug. I use the uh, J12Y champion spot plug. I like that. Then in 1977, they came out with the shovel heads with the deep reach, 3 quarter reach spot plug. See, it? See the difference? 
So the thing you have to watch is don't take the long reach uh, spot plug and put it into the uh, short 3 8 hole because the piston is going to come up and wham the, uh, the spot plug right out of the threads. It'll strip all the threads. So this is just for 1977 and up and all these shovel heads, the heads are interchangeable. So even though you have a 70 to 76 motor, somebody over a period of time could have changed the heads to late model. So you have to make sure you put the right spot plug in the right head. Uh, the gap for points on a spot plug is 25 thousandths of an inch. If you have uh, electronic ignition, it's uh, 35 thousandths. I really don't like electronic ignition. Any kind of major short in a, a motorcycle, the little magic box, see this is a magic box, I gotta, that's in front of your motor mount on electronic ignition bikes, it burns out right away and you're stuck. Uh, the point setup, it's actually six cylinder Chevy points and condenser, which you could buy any, anywhere in America in any auto parts store. So uh, it's a lot safer to have a point setup. Now, if you have dual spot plugs, uh, dual spot plugs is very good. I do the whole dual spot plug uh, setup. If you send your heads in, it's only $80. Uh, but then you need two coils, and uh, I recommend two condensers. Does anybody out there know what a condenser does? Of course you don't. A condenser breaks down the magnetic field when the points are open. So since you have four spot plugs, it's good to put two condensers in. The extra condenser uh, could go on the extra coil. Uh, anything you guys want to know, just give me a call. 719-683-2200. I've been working on these motors my whole life. Probably 50 years. Okay, I'm going to show you how to set the timing now. Okay, this is the uh, typical Holly Davidson flywheel. See, it's got a notch over there, right? And it's got a hole. The notch right here is for the front cylinder. So you turn your uh, flywheels around. First you have to take your uh, 5 16 uh, uh, plug out of the timing hole there, right? And then you can see this mark when you turn the uh, flywheels over. And uh, you get it so this mark is coming right up towards the back of the threads, lined up with the threads. That means the front piston will be uh, 7 16 before top dead center, 437 thousandths of an inch. And that's when you set your, uh, your points. This is the point setup, 1970 and up. They use these point setups. If you have electronic ignition, you could take it out and put the point setup in there. As you can see, there's a high lobe and a low lobe. The high lobe is for the front cylinder. So when this is in the cam cover, you have to turn the motor around and the first thing you do before you do anything is get the point set up on the high lobe and set it at 18 thousandths of an inch. As you can see, this, this has a little play. It could actually move about three quarters of an inch. So what you do is you reach in there with a pair of pliers, you advance the automatic advance, and then turn the timing plate so the points are just starting to open. Then you lock down your two screws, just like it is right here in the cam cover. And then your timing is set. There's no need for a timing uh, a light to be used. Okay, this is the automatic defense. As you can see, the head of it comes right off. See that? This will actually, see one, one side is round, the other side is flat. There's a little dowel in there. This will actually go on only one way, so you can't make a mistake. Here, see? It's on there right now. Okay? Here, there's a little dowel in the back there, right? And the cam has a notch in it. See the notch in the front? So that could only go on one way. See, the notch goes into the little dowel. See, just like that. So you can't make a mistake with that. As you guys know, the, the gas really isn't that good these days. There's too much alcohol and methanol, ethanol in the gas. So what I recommend is this 104. See that? Octane booster. That's what I use on my Dragon motorcycle. That's why it sounds so good. You know, you could dump a whole can of this. You fill up uh, your whole... Fat Bob gas tank, three and a half, four, five gallon tanks. Put the whole thing in there. It's really good for the motor. It lubricates a lot of the parts too. Okay, so anyway, the different cams. The cam I recommend for uh, an Evo, you know, an Evolution, the hot seller, I tried all the cams before and after. The one that really works good when the light changes and gives you all the power up to 3,500 RPMs, it's called the AV27 Andrews cam. It's got a short duration, that's what you want. Now if you have a long duration on the cam, it'll keep the valves open longer, but the motor can't create 
horsepower compression when the valves are open. That's why you can't have a cam for all RPMs. So I recommend the A grind, you know, for the early uh, shovel heads and uh, pan heads. It's got a 2.44 duration and it's only a 450 lift. Stock on a pan head and, and, a, and a shovel head is a 380 lift. So anyway, the shorter the duration, the more power you're going to get at low end when the light changes. You have a street bike, you don't want the power when it's 50, 60 miles an hour because the next light will be changing. You want the power when the light changes right away. So that's what I recommend. Okay, there's a real lot more I could tell you about these motors. I know them like the back of my hand. Every day of my life, just about, these hands touch the Holly Davidson part. That's a good record. Anything you want to know, give me a call. I do machine work here. I don't work on people's bikes. We do lower end. We do heads. We do barrels. I do all the stuff. I specialize in all the stuff the average shops in the United States don't do themselves. You need any help? Mail it in with a note. I'll do it right away and send it right back to you. Thanks for watching. You guys have a great day.